dishonor. La la la, CC. Computer's frozen. Close the window. Open the window. And here we are. Here we are. Five. A? Well, I've heard A, D, B. Anybody got a C for me? There, I hear a C. So I have all four answers. Which one is correct? D is correct. D is correct. Because the x intercept is 4, 0, and the y intercept is 0, negative 3. 3 times 4 is 12. 12 minus 12 is 0. 3 times 0 is 0. Negative 4 times negative 3 is positive 12. 12 minus 12 would be 0. So those are the correct x and y to put into that equation to make it equal 0. No problem. Thank you for asking, Ash, and I'm not even being sarcastic because that was a bit of a tough question because, of the way, because it's in general form. And to have you ask, you probably helped 10 people in here that didn't want to ask. So well done. I'm going to roar myself with the chocolate. Yes, you did a good job. I did. Pardon me. It's extraordinarily dark chocolate. It's 69% cocoa with strawberries on the back. It's from Germany. Lena Gut brought it for me. It is chocolate edbere. Erdbeere, which is apparently red berry in German. Because strawberries are indeed berries that are red. Oh, I didn't know that. Indeed. Wow. To be perfectly honest with you, I was not expecting to like it as much as I did. I like dark chocolate, and then when I opened it up and I saw the strawberries, I was like, hmm, this could get interesting, but it's quite delicious. And dark chocolate is full of some word that sounds science-y that's really good for you. I think it's flavonoids, but I'm not sure. I'm not joking. And I think dark chocolate is good for dealing with free radicals in your guts. I'm not surely what those are either, but apparently they kill you. But I don't know. All right, back to business. Um, sorry. Uh, six. What is our answer for six? A. B. How can it be B? The point is 4, 6, right? That would have to make that the y-intercept, yeah? Right? But if it goes through y6 at negative 4, it can't possibly be B, can it? So what is it? A? a. a? Is it A? Let's check. What is that that is an x what is that y. that is a y so a six equals negative three times negative four which is what no negative three times negative four is positive 12 what is 12 minus six six so it had to be a because y equaled six uh, seven, the perpendicular lines, what are they? D, as in doornail, well done. Uh, eight, if it's perpendicular to this guy and passes through there, what is its slope? Well, we know that it can't be what? It can't be C and D because they are still negative, just like this slope. So it has to be A or B. How do we check it? What is that? X. What is that? Y. Negative 1. What's 3 times 1 third? 
Nope. If I have one third and I have three of them, oh, you, have you have one. It was, a, it was a tough question, I know. Does one equal negative one? Because no. y is negative one. So it can't be a. What's that leave us with? B. It's B. Again, I cannot stress this enough. I can't make the unit any simpler for you. X, Y, X, Y, X, Y, X, Y. Does everybody see this complicated and obfuscating pattern? None of you even know what obfuscating means. What does that mean? But I'm going to use it on purpose. Yes, you can, you, you can look it up. Then you can use it three times a day, and then it will be yours forever. O B F U S C A T I N G. Obfuscating. Uh huh. <laughs> Sound it out. Obfuscating. All right, again, C, it is indeed not C. It is indeed D, because the slope is right there in point slope form. Giving us a mark on that page out of five. Now, a few people ask questions there. I hope they have now been illuminated how's that definition search coming up there big guy how are we doing yes and the ironic thing about the definition of obfuscating is it's rather obfuscate itself Uh huh. So which one was I using it in? But it need not be obfuscating, is it? Because X's are X's and Y's are Y's. And number 10. Which graph? I will shrink it down a little so we can see it all on one screen, even though you can all see it all on one screen right in front of you. I know. But I've also had students say when I've put stuff up on the board and told them that it, it's in uh, high def, they're like, whoa, that's awesome. And I'm like, you know, you see in high def. Nah, it looks way better up there. Okay. Can't argue with people that feel that way. The whole point of high def is to make what you see on the screen look more like what you see in real life. But it doesn't make it. Carry on. Anyways, um, which is it this one? It is C. It is C. How did you know? It went through negative three, negative one with a slope of positive three quarters. There's negative three, negative one, up one, two, three, and over one, two, three, four. And there it is. Way to go. Number 11. See again, because it had to have an opposite reciprocal slope do you see the pattern? I can't. All uh, right. So you have 11 marks so far. This question is going to be worth um, two marks. One for telling me the X intercept and the Y intercept and one mark for graphing. Depending on which way you do this question, you may find the x and y intercepts after you have graphed it or you may do some algebra find the x and y intercepts and then graph it from there i do not care which way you do it all right 
but the x and y intercepts are as follows the y intercept is 0 comma 1 and the x intercept is 1 comma 0 so you have a dot at 1 comma 0 a dot at 0 comma 1 and the slope of course is negative 1 so it goes right through here for two marks. Yeah? Any questions? How did I know all that? Well, I either put it into slope-intercept form, y-intercept of 1, slope of negative 1, or I subbed those numbers in. For x with 1, because that's the, or for uh, the y-intercept when x is 0, 1 minus 0 is 1. And the x-intercept is x, the y-intercept is 0, 1 minus 1 to get 0. So it had to be 1, 0, and 0, 1. Questions? Comments? Lovely. What about concerns? Huh? What about concerns? I've been too lenient in allowing you to have concerns. Oh, no. Take, take that and make it look like that. What is highlighted in blue that is no good? That is general form. I want slope-intercept form. So some stuff has to happen. Isolate Y. It's the only thing you need to say. Because by the 10th grade, after four to five years of algebra practice, that should be all that needs to be said, shouldn't it? Great. So every single one of you, even if you didn't do it, in the time it takes me to finish this sentence, because I am filling up this sentence with unnecessary words in order to get you more time in order to do the work that I wish you to do, I continue to talk and stretch this sentence out with punctuation and various superfluous adjectives and adverbs, you are going to isolate why. Now, all of you should have been done by that. That was a long sentence. Because how long does it take? This long. 2y equals negative 3x plus 4y equals negative 3 over 2x plus 2. And that is worth one point. Which one? Superfluous? It's always good usage of it. I just don't choose random words and say them thermaturgically. <laughs> now, what's wrong with this one? Same thing. Isolate y. x minus 8 equals 4y. 1 quarter x minus 2 equals y. For one mark. Any questions? Excellent. Now, this question requires three pieces of work. Dum, dum, dum. I, one, A, identify the slope and the D intercept. You get one mark for both of these. What is the slope of this line? 3 over 2. That gets you one mark. What is the d-intercept of this line? I would rather it be written as an ordered pair, but 2 is acceptable for one mark. What does the slope mean? Uh-huh. So what does that mean in this case? He moves she, because it's Christine, although that's not really fair, right? Maybe somebody is, you know. So go on. Christine moves up three. Christine floats. She moves away three meters in two seconds. Is that a good rate? Is that how we would say it? 
I drive 120 kilometers per two hours. Right. 1.5 meters per second away. That's her speed. If you have three over two meters away, you still get the full mark because you understand what is going on. You just forgot that we like our rates in units. Okay, what does the d-intercept mean in this case? Absolutely right. She starts two meters away because at zero time, she's two meters distance from the motion sensor. One mark for each of them for a total there of four. B, write the equation in slope intercept form, but why is it D and T instead of X and Y? Because it's distance time. It's not just random numbers. It's actually something. But there's still X's and Y's. So the D is Y. D equals slope 3 over 2 T plus 2 for one mark. And finally, C, you have two choices to solve C. You can use the graph or you can use algebra. I do not care which one you do. Hey, do me a favor. That's full of water, right? Yeah. Can you go like... Really away? No, put it in the sink in the girl's bathroom or something. Because when the janitor picks up that bag, it will have melted. So how are we going to do this? If we do it on the graph, where must I go? I got to go to six meters. Does that tell me a when? Only when I go down here. Can that give me an exact answer? It can give you an estimate. So you could say somewhere between two and three, right? So you're going to say two to three seconds because you can't tell me exactly. If you did that, I still give you your full mark. How do you find the exact answer? Algebra, which is the six meters. Is that a D or a T? D, six equals three over two T plus two. Bring the two over, four equals three over two T. Multiply both sides by two. Eight equals three T. T equals eight thirds, which is 2.66666666666666666666666666666666666666666666666666666666666666666666666666666666666666666666666666666666666666666666666666666666666666666666666666666666666666666666666666666666666666666666666666666666666666666666666666666666666666666666666666666666666666666666666666666666666666666666666666666
What is the DV here? The number of girls. Which means I have an X and a Y, don't I? Do I also have a rate of change? What is it? 4,162. Because if I go one year over, I go up 4,162. So I also have an M. Right? Okay. So if I have X's, Y's, and M's, can I do any of the forms? Yes, I can. Which one will I use? Point slope form because I know right there in that specific year that many people were that many girls were playing. So that's a point, isn't it? Now, can I put 2000 on the graph? I could. Could I also say that that is the 10th year? Both would work, would they not? Because the first year is 90, and that is 2000, which is the 10th year. So does it matter what I use? No. If I say that that is the 10th year, and that many girls are playing, what is the point on the graph? 10, 4, 45,400. Right? So now I have an X, a Y that I know and a slope that I know. Point slope form. Is that, is it not? Great, so what do I write right there? So what do I write right there? 45,400. What do I write right there? 4,162. What do I write right there? 10. Yeah? Or I write Y minus 45,400 equals 4,162 X minus 2,000. Right? Because you could have made this 2,000. Couldn't you? Both of them will get me the same answer or the right answer. I don't want to use the big one. I like to use these. So how will I solve this? There's my equation. That's worth two marks because it says right there I want and then equation first. Now, when you read the question, it does say the number of T years after 1990. So I really should use 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, shouldn't I? Right, because it says right there we're starting in 1990, that 1990 is time zero. So there's my equation. How do I find out how many girls were playing in 2009? I could replace the X with 2009, but if I was doing it properly, I would replace the X with what? 09? I started in 1990, and it's 2009. 19. Y minus 45,400 equals 4,162 times 19 minus 10, which is, of course, Y minus 45,400 equals 4,162 times 9, which is Y minus 45,400, 4,162 times 9. Uh, you guys are doing that on your calculator. I'm doing it on my in my head well not in my head eight eleven minus six is five uh five minus one is four eleven minus four is seven thirty seven thousand fifty eight four fifty eight what do i do with that now isolate it so i bring that over here which means i add it and get y equals fifty eight eight uh, 7 and 5 is 12, carry the 1, 82,858. Yeah? Now, 
Some people in the other class cheated a little bit and they used a table of values. And they put 2,000 right there and however many girls were playing, 45,400. They knew that every year it went up, they had to add 4162 because that was the rate of change, right? So then this one would have been uh, 49,562 and so on and so on and so on. And they just did their table of values up to 2009. Can, wrong word, wrong verb. Should I give them full credit when you read that question? No. No, I shouldn't, should I? Because what they did was grade nine work, yeah? They didn't use the equation, right? Picking up what I'm putting down? So in, on the th one, two, three, four scale, that's a two, right? Maybe a three, depending on what kind of mood I'm in. But there's no way they're getting the four, are they? All right. Uh, so that was out of two. The isolation uh, has got to be out of one. So making that last question out of three. Three and eight is 11. And that 11 and two makes the whole thing out of, 11 and two is 13 and 11, makes the whole thing out of 24. That is the second mark that I've collected for this unit. When do you report them to me? Which is what day? Wednesday. The first one was out of 42. This one was out of 24. Now, some of you should already be noticing, you should have noticed it a long time ago, that not handing in your reviews really hurts your mark. Every review has been recorded. You can mark them at any time. All right. Again, you are on your honor. If you lie, the only person that looks bad is you. Because telling me you got nine or 20 out of 20 on every single review and then getting five out of 40 on the test tells me one thing and one thing only, that you are a liar. Okay? I have not assigned a due date to any of those. I just leave it as a zero. If it's still a zero at the end of June, the grade's over. All right? Fix the problem. If you have zeros on anything other than quizzes, fix it. Okay? Okay. Uh, we're going to pause that. All right. Now, as I said, this is kind of a mini unit because the very last unit uses lines to solve real world problems. There's three ways to do that. One of them uses graphing. Two of them use algebra. We just finished a unit that made lines from graphing and from algebra. Right? So... I put this little mini bridging unit in to get extra algebra practice so you don't have to rely on graphing because we just proved with that last question on Christine walking away from the motion sensor, graphing does not give you exact answers. So we need to practice and get better with our algebra. Also, in the real world, if you are actually doing math somewhere, you often have decimals and fractions, which means you have to use them to get exact answers. Oakley doakley. So let us carry on here. There are four forms to writing a linear function. Somebody name one of them for me. I do not care which one you name, just name one. Slope. Slope intercept, sure. That can be the first one we talk about. What is slope-intercept form? 
y equals mx plus b. What do you know about that form as soon as you see it? Give me one thing and one thing only. No, not you. B is the point zero y, which is the y-intercept. Excellent. Somebody tell me one more thing they know from here. M is the slope. But that's really a whole can of worms, isn't it? Because saying M is the slope means nothing unless you know what the slope is. So what is the slope? Rise over run. What else is it? Y2 minus Y1 over X2 minus X1. What else is it? We just did a whole question that wasn't X's and Y's. Change in, change in DV over change in IV. Yeah? What else is it? It's also the rate of change. So that one little thing gives us a crap ton of information, doesn't it? Plus, at the very end of it all, if I gave you a point, for example, 3, 7, could you put that into there? Where would the 3 go? On the, X. on the X. Where would the 7 go? On the Y. That is everything you know from slope-intercept form, yes? Excellent. What's another form? Yes, sir. Which is what? And his ugly cousin, which I'm going to draw in gray because it's so lame, it doesn't even deserve a real color. Now, because you can't actually write anything in black, because black is the absence of light. This is not black. This is incredibly dark blue. Black doesn't exist. You cannot artificially create it, because as soon as light is involved, you have a color. What do you know about this? Much of anything? Yeah, you only know stuff about the form. This tells you very little about the line, doesn't it? The only thing this is really good for is kind of the X and Y intercepts, right? So for this one, really all you know is stuff about the form. And about that form, A must be, Ash already said it, A must be, a whole, what? yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. A, B, and C must be whole. And what else do we know about A? Right? Uh, that wasn't what I was going for, but you just jumped to my next one. A must be greater than zero. And the other one that Ash just said, uh, no brackets. Well, that's what greater than zero means. So all that's about the form. Does this guy help us easily find anything about the line? It's not even easy, is it? I mean, you can use it a little bit for intercepts, right? Because the intercepts are x0 and 0y, right? So I can, if I'm looking for the x-intercept, what do I cross out? If I'm looking for the x-intercept, what drops out of there? The y disappears. If I'm looking for the y-intercept, what drops out? 
the x, and then I can solve. That's about the only good that form has for us. And what is the last form? The one that's actually the most widely useful. Point-slope form. Oops, i got to write it in words. What do I know about that form? And what's the little rule that I have to remember there? Known points, there's my asterisk. What's the rule? I'll help you out by telling you this. 3, 7 is in that line. Where do the 3 and 7 go? X1, Y1. Right. Opposite signs. And it's easy when we're subbing this way because we just put 3 there and 7 there, correct? But if you already have the equation which is y minus 7 equals m x minus 3. Some of you will be tempted to say this line goes through negative 3, negative 7. But it doesn't, does it? Good. Now, let's make sure you can actually use all of these mathematical tools to your advantage. You're a mathematical tool. Joke never gets tired. Who's choosing the color? Dusty Rose? Yeah. Oh. All right. So what form am I going to use there? The question tells me what form I need. What is it? Slope intercept. What is slope intercept form, Ash? Even though you don't have to memorize it because it's in your data booklet, should you memorize it? Do I have a Y? an M, an X, a B, or do I have a combination of them? Do I have some of them? Do I not have all of them? What do I have? M and B. I have M of what? Five. Five. And what's, do I know anything else? B is four. Can I then fill this out? What is it? And I can leave it that way because where do I find the values for x and y? On the graph, once I put the line on it, right? So I can always leave x and y. Cool? All right, now I want you to take this and make it look like these. Go. There is no right or wrong way to start. There is only a right or a wrong answer. To remind you if you don't know, even though we just wrote it down, I'll write them again. A lot of kids get mad at me here. How can it be, if they're all supposed to be positive, why do you sometimes have negatives? Because what is negative? What are negative numbers really? Or I lie. What is subtraction really? It's adding negative numbers. So that's why we write this as plus, even though that C can be negative. Okay? Go. Who's going to tell me the answer? Well, I know that the Holloway bros know. And I know that Louie knows, and I know that Corey knows. I would like to be pleasantly surprised. Eric? <laughs> Eric's having a rough day. Yeah, I'm having a rough day. I can tell. That's why I'm not giving you a hard time. What do I need to do to this to make it look like this? 
isolate four. Except there's some rules about general and standard form, aren't there? There's a rule about that guy right there. What is it? So is he already positive? So I'd better not move him, correct? 5x. When I move that y, what happens to it? 5x minus y. And when I move that 4, what happens to it? Done. Does it matter where that 4 is? Is this the same answer? Is it general form? Do I give you full credit? I mean, is it standard form? Do I give you full credit? Yes, because it does not matter. How do I turn this into this? Move the four. Does everybody see? The point is it matters not what form you have. You can still graph it immediately. You no longer need tables of values. Okay? All right. Look at three. What do you know? Choose a color. Uh, turquoise. Turquoise? Oh, why you got to be that way? No, he said turquoise. Yes. That one? I think I already have turquoise out there. Okay. Yep, that's turquoise. So, what's this? So what letter does it represent? M. M. What's this? X. X. What's this? Y. y. What form uses M, X, and Y? when the x and y are just random. Slope intercept uses a random x and y. Point slope form uses a random x and y. So it is y what? Why is it y plus 2? It says right there that it's negative 2 because it's minus negative 2, right? Which is what? y plus 2 equals m x minus 6. I don't need to change that. So it's 2 thirds x minus 6. Yeah? yeah? Now, take that. Turn the page over. And do the exact same thing we just did. Now listen to me and listen to me carefully. Is there a right order? No. Are there rules you must follow no matter which order you choose? Yes. Who chooses the order you do these in? You do. But math chooses how you do them. Right? So, you have to make these look like the forms that you know. You can do it in any order, any way, but you have to know the rules. Go. All right. So now, of course, we just finish it off. And we're going to finish it off with dark green. How do I finish this off? Get the X's and Y's together, get the constant by itself, right? So should I move that to X? Yes or no? Because, no. Why? Because it has to be positive and it already is. 2x minus 3y equals what? Positive 18. 18. Yeah? What is it in general form? Yeah? Now. For those of you that went straight to here, you started with y minus 2 equaled uh, 2 thirds x minus 6, yeah? Right? You needed to get to here. 
oh, I've got it right there, y equals mx plus b. Well, there's your m, there's your x, there's b, so y equals 2 thirds x minus 6 plus 2, correct? Now, what is the only difference here? There's no bracket, so I just get rid of those brackets, right? y equals 2 thirds x minus 12 thirds plus 2, yeah? What's 12 thirds? y equals 2 thirds x minus 4 plus 2. So what do you do there? Collect like terms. What's negative 4 plus 2? Negative 2. Done. If you went to there first. If you didn't, then you have this guy down here, 2x minus 3y equal, minus 18 equals 0. And you make this guy look like this. 2x minus 18 equals 3y. Y is isolated and positive. Divide both sides by 3. 2 thirds x minus 6 equals y. Where, whoa, 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 what did I do wrong? What did I do wrong? Yeah. So, uh, obviously, I've made an error here. Where did I go wrong? Two-thirds minus six, 12 over three. Oh, I got that one right. Um, I think it was from the first step on letter A, where you multiply by three. Cancel, cancel. 2x minus 6, 2x minus 12. I thought you were supposed to multiply the 3 by the 6. No. 3's cancel. So we're all okay. It is down here I've made my error. 2 thirds minus 6, negative 12 over 3, negative 4. Plus 2. Oh, duh. -huh. It's plus 2. What did I write? Negative two. negative 2. So it's plus 2, which makes this one what? Negative 2, which makes this one negative 2, which makes this one negative 2, which makes this one negative 6. And now we're right. Now. Let's say you did that exact same thing. Yeah. Of course you can. Let's say you did that exact same thing on your test. What do I do? Is that an error in math? Or is that error in writing? Writing. Now, if I asked you to take this and you wrote it wrong here, can I punish you there? Yeah. But if you do all your algebra correct with the wrong number, do I still give you full marks? Yeah. Does everybody understand? Can I guarantee that for all your other math teachers? No. Because I care about the concept. Right? The only place that my mistake would have been acceptable is what I did. Because we didn't screw it up up here. Right? We screwed it up because I had that off the screen and I wrote it as negative. Okay? Five. What form do I need? Slope intercept. Slope intercept. Y equals MX plus B. What do I have? I got nothing, don't I? I got some X's and Y's, but I got no M, I got no B. Can I find any of that stuff? How? Great. What's the slope? Choose a color. M equals y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. Who decides which is which? 
you do. Everybody label these four right now. Label them. I do not care. Just do it. I should hear the scritch scratch of 28 pencils. And then tell me if I have done it correctly. No, what did I do wrong? The numbers have to match up. Is this right? Is that right? Is this right? Does it matter which way you labeled it as? Why not? Because you're going to get the same answer. Fill it in. What's the slope? One third, <coughs> right? So now, what can I put in there? Do I have any of those letters? I have M. Y equals one third X plus B. Do I have X's and Y's? Where? Right there and right there. What letter is that? What are the two numbers I could put there? Four equals one third. Then what would go here? Negative two plus B. Or what could I write? Five equals one third. One plus B. Which one of those is more sensible for you to use? The green one, why? Because I'm multiplying by one, right? What's one third times one? One third. So five equals one third plus B. How do I isolate B? How do I get rid of positive one third? Minus one third. If I have five and I take away one third, what's left? Four and two thirds. If that's what B is, what can I then write? right there. So what is my final answer to this question? Done with fractions even. And Eric, who's having a bad day and hasn't written anything down, got three of those answers just popping his head up. And I'm not putting you down. I'm saying that's the level you guys are getting to right now. You're able to do this without even writing it down. A few of you, right? Now, why is it that when I drop this in front of you and as a test, some of you are going to tell me that you can no longer do it? What has changed? But who makes that stress, Kingston? You do. Is there any reason to be stressed? And again, Eric, I'm not picking on you. You're having a bad day. You haven't said anything. Normally, you give me 20 right answers a class, right? You popped up, you gave me two right answers, and then you're probably gonna rest again because you know what you're doing. Every single one of you does. Why is it on a test that all of a sudden you don't? But you're making that up for yourselves, right? You know how to do it. Try this last one and then class will be over. There is a trick to number six. I have done something ruthless to you. I have obfuscated the work that you have been doing. What is that trick? It's an X intercept. How many of you saw the word intercept and automatically went Y equals MX plus B? How many of you looked at that and had it pop into your head? Don't lie. I'm not saying you did anything with it. But even if that did pop into your head, could you still do it? Yeah, you could, because an x-intercept is what? 2 comma 0, isn't it? Yeah. And isn't that an x? Yeah. And isn't that a y? Yeah. And don't you know the slope? Yeah. 
So could you even do it, even if you did go to that form? But could you also go to point slope? Would they both be right? Of course they would. Do that. And for homework tonight, just try page 222. Just those five questions or four questions or whatever's on 222. We'll finish this off in dusty rows for my good friend Ash. What goes in for X and Y? Zero equals what goes in for M? Five thirds. What goes in for X? Two plus B. What's five thirds times two? Ten thirds plus B. How do I isolate B? Minus ten thirds. Negative ten thirds equals B. Put that into there. What do I get? plus negative 10 thirds, which we wouldn't write. What would we write instead? Just minus 10 thirds. Would I be allowed to write it three and one third? Yes. And then this, I want you to try for HW tonight. I know.